guys, Haley Lane, aka Key Black here, and welcome back to another episode of Off the Cuff. And we're still not quite done with Legend of Zelda, so I am once again here with Jessica Calais Sheffield. Hello. And Mon Pian. Hello. And uh, Link's Awakening is very much fresh on the brain, because that's the last one that we just rewatched. In fact, we just went through and, and like watched a couple more clips of it. Well, I'm glad that, that you you actually watched it uh, with Jess without me. I haven't yeah. actually I haven't actually <laughs> played it since uh, Probably about 10 years. Oh my god. So I was really pleased, like, after our, you know, <laughs> our joint marathon of the, of the only games that ever existed, you guys were like, yeah, we just went and watched Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening. Yes. I was like, yes, I love that game. It's so good. It does feel like it should be cuter than it is, if that makes any sense. It's like the, the style is very cute. It's very like, oh, we're kind of in a dream world. You're fighting off nightmares and, you know, you're going to be, you know, waking the wind fish and it's going to be this very nice dreamy kind of thing. And it's like, this is actually kind of horrifying from some of these implications in here. It's like, you know, if you, if you defeat us, the entire world will vanish. It's yeah, like, it's like, it's, it sort of starts out as a dream. <laughs> Like a, a like a dream like yeah. world, and, and you sort of go through it, and you're thinking, hold on a second, this is this is is this a fever dream? Am I dead? <laughs> Did we die in the beginning? Like, um, <laughs> are all these people real? Is this just in my brain? And, <laughs> and, and what do they mean by everything is destroyed? Does that mean what? Do, what do you mean by waking up? Are we? Gonna, yeah. Is this a dream, and it's going to end? Is what is the wind fish? Yeah. And what's it going to do? And why? Yeah. Why is there a fish? <laughs> <laughs> giant egg on top of this island. Yeah. Why is nobody commenting on how weird that is at the yeah. top of the mountain on this island in the middle of nowhere? What do you mean we can't leave the island unless that thing wakes up? What do you mean what? she wants to become a seagull? Yeah. <laughs> it starts out so cute too. It's like this, you know, this, this cute girl wakes you up on the beach and just like, it's just like, Aw, that's really sweet. They nursed me back to health and I woke up and they're like, oh, we know your name because it's engraved on the shield. Here you go. Yeah. You know, it's dangerous to go alone. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it was actually little lines like that, which, you know, when I was a kid, that sort of set me off because it was just like, this must be your sword. It has your name on it. Yeah. And I was like, that's a bit weird. Like, it, yes, could be my sword, but it's a bit too, it's a bit too placed. It's, it's sort of just yeah. like, huh, this, this doesn't seem to be some random island that I was... Uh, washed ashore, washed ashore. yeah. It was sort of just like this is a bit weird. Yeah, it's like too convenient. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, and it's kind of like you've got this ideal girl <laughs> who's wishing to get away on the island, and it's just kind of like, yeah, it's it's, a, it's a good game. <laughs> it's very kawaii in some respects. Like that, I re I did I did like the you know yeah. kind of the, the date scene with her on the beach, and uh, you know. Um, Jess was pointing this out earlier with the, uh, you know, the kind of swing to the rescue and everything like that. Like, I didn't play it personally, I just watched the playthrough. Mm -hmm. But I can kind of imagine how it must have felt to be playing that part, because then you're just like, yeah, I'm being the hero, I'm yeah. gonna get the girl, I'm gonna, like, <laughs> it's gonna be really cool. It's really funny because it doesn't, it doesn't feel like Ocarina of Time, it doesn't feel like Majora's Mask, but it... I can kind of see how that would have been one of the founding games to give the impression of what to expect out of Legend of Zelda as a series. Yeah, I mean, it was very different to the original games, which were more straightforward. Um, mm -hmm. And I believe Link's Awakening was made in the evenings by about seven people. <laughs> so it was kind of like a pet project. It was kind of like an abstract experimental pet project by a couple of members from Nintendo who went on to make Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and right. all the rest of the games. Um, and uh, it became, they they, it, they did it, and then mm -hmm. Miyamoto was just like, great, let's publish it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty polished game, well done. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> it's, a, it's fun to play, let's, yeah. let's do it. Um, and as a result, I, I, I don't think they had much anybody like overseeing and sort of, you know, telling them, oh, this is weird. Yeah, like, don't do that. We have to put this in there because it's company, you know, yeah, policy exactly. or whatever. Yeah, exactly. It was like a, like a fully creative uh, endeavor by these seven or so guys, so. See, I haven't played the first, the, the first, first Legend of Zelda series. Like you, you mentioned they're a lot more simple and straightforward. Yeah, they're for the NES um, and it's very much like, take off your sword, save the princess from Ganon. Okay. End credits, you know. And <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a lot that they pulled from that, right. you know, going through the series, but there isn't any sort of uh, anything to really make you think too hard. Whereas with Link's Awakening, it was something like, 
Whoa. How much of this is real? Yeah, what's going on here? Like, what am I supposed to think about this? Um, yeah. Am I dead? That was, <laughs> that's what I kept, the whole time of playing the game, I was just like, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead and this is all like some fever dream heaven experience and um, oh, you man. know. Yeah, I, I can see that because like the opening cutscene has almost nothing to do with the rest of the game aside from just like, okay, you crashed up on this island, yes. but like, why are you out in the ocean? Yeah. Like what's going on? <laughs> and you're just like, oh, it's, it's either dream or dead. <laughs> 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 and I think that's quite... There's a, there's a popular theory, I don't subscribe to it, I don't think it's, mm. it's uh, uh, valid, but a lot of people from Link's Awakening think that, think that in certain timelines, Link is dead at, <laughs> all the time. I mean, he's a Stolfos. Yeah. At one point, yeah. so I mean, I hey. Mean, they, they, they're like, there's the confirmed. Like, well done. <laughs> Eventually he does die. <laughs> but yeah, it was a great, Great, uh, <laughs> great experience as a child, for sure, playing Link's Awakening and having that first sort of meta experience for the game where you're, it's not just I'm going to pick up sword and do this object and save this person and credits. It was more like, what just happened? Yeah. I'm on the beach. Is this a real beach? Is that a real person? <laughs> Why is there an egg? <laughs> There were no eggs in the previous game. What does that so have to do with anything? Why is it now a whale? And they yeah. said it was a fish. You know, it, it, it's kind of uh, made you really, really think as a child. And you sort of, that game is what made me really fall in love with the series as a whole. It's also, it was also a lot longer of a game than I expected it to be. Cause like, you know, I, I, I'm kind of learning as over the course of like going back and, you know, being introduced to some of the older games. Like games used to be really long, you know, it, it was, you wouldn't have guides and stuff, so like there, there would be you know lots of puzzles and things to solve. The playthrough that that you showed us, Jess, was like nine hours long, and that was somebody who knew what he was doing. Yeah, if you if you speed through it, you could probably get through the game in under four hours. But that's knowing everything, not having to figure anything out. Um, and like I said, even though I only got to the third dungeon when mm -hmm. I played this game, I must have clocked. 40, 50, 60 hours playing the game. And that's as, as a kid who's running around every day and like, you know, exploring through the woods and going swimming and all this kind of stuff. And I was still clocking hours on this game. Um, but yeah, I, I like what you were saying because you you had played previous games and then, mm. and then you saw Link's Awakening and you saw like that shift. For me, Link's Awakening was the first introduction to the to the entire series for me. Mm. So for me, it was whoa, spooky, bum bum, ba -da 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 -da, beep, you know, mm -hmm. like oh man, adventure at sea. I already <laughs> love it, you know, because of course you know there's all this naval imagery in my house. And, <laughs> and then I didn't question the egg. I was like, interesting, giant giant dinosaur egg. Oh, windfish. Okay, intre Like I I had no idea, mm -hmm. but what the the meta part was fantastic for people who are already kind of into the the game and the world and that that game worked on so many levels because here i am totally new i don't know any of this stuff all i know is this is cool i love the opening i love being this little dude who gets a sword and he's he's fighting these monsters and he's kind of sweet on this chick who's sweet on him mm -hmm. and yeah i mean then we actually watched the playthrough and I'm sitting here like a kid again because I'm going, oh, this is the first time, the first time I've ever, ever seen anything past Bottle Grotto. <laughs> so all these memories from being six and you know, like running into the alligator who's like, give me that! It's like, <laughs> the canned meat. Canned food! Canned food! <laughs> and, and then going past that and going like, I remember it. This is so wholesome. This is so great. And then, then the meta stuff started coming in. So I only got that taste recently. Mm. But you're right. It, it's amazing how that game really. How how did you describe it? Uh, David Lynch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was it. I think it was actually Link's Awakening. I'd probably have to check that. But I think Alnuma actually said they based it on Twin Peaks. 
Oh you, my you're right. god. You, you mentioned that. Yeah, he's like uh uh it, it was a lot like the Imagawa thing where they were a big they really enjoyed yeah. watching Twin Peaks at the time and they're like, Well we kinda really wanted to go with that that dream state and um, you know, that kind of ethereal there is more than one level mm -hmm. on this, mm -hmm. you know. Oh. And of course, the dream dungeon was uh, the epitome yeah. of that. Mm -hmm. I, still, I still don't understand that, but that thing is freaky. Yeah, I like love you that. Just get into this dungeon, and uh, the only way to you know get to um, the center of it is to have you know a certain level of you know certain amount of things. But all the things you defeat in this dungeon are ones that mirror your actions. So already, okay, you're defeating yeah. things that are copying you, defeating things that are copying you, defeating things that are copying you, defeating things that are copying you, and then you get to the center, and it's a bed. And you're like, uh, <laughs> okay, and you, you, just, you sleep in the bed, and suddenly you're in you're in a dungeon, mm -hmm. and then you get the ocarina. Mm, it's like, yeah. and I remember we had seen the ocarina playthrough, and I saw that, and I was like, oh, oh there it is. <laughs> I'm sure if I had actually gotten through this whole game, maybe if I was two or three years older mm -hmm. when I was playing, I yeah. probably would have gotten through it. Um, but that would have been the biggest mind blow when you're like, have you ever played Ocarina of Time? I'm like, what if time? <laughs> <laughs> you mean the Ocarina at the center of my nightmare? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Those yeah. memories just activate. It's like, oh, 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 there it is. <laughs> I do think it's very interesting that in Ocarina, you know, that girl who you can't stay with gives one to you. Yeah. And then you meet Princess Zelda and she gives you a better one. A better oh, one. ow. Uh, oh my Kokoro. <laughs> yeah, that's such a oh. theme in all of the games, which started really in uh, Link's Awakening of having, you know, the homey town girl um, or the girl you grew up with that mm -hmm. you just can't stay with. Because, you know, if you're, if you're gonna leave home and seek adventure and sort of do all these things that develop you as a person, to a large extent, you can't go back. Yeah. And so that that was, for me, when I was playing Ocarina of Time, that was the first scene where I thought, I am so hooked on this game. It's when you leave home for the first time and Sari is there and there's that silent moment where he slowly walks backwards and then he runs away. Oh, it's yes. It's so heartfelt and I was just like, <sighs> that's what it feels like to leave home for the first time. Yeah. I was just like, this is the best game ever. Like yes, <laughs> yes. Ow. And, and I love that Terminal <laughs> Montage made a bit of a joke of that and everyone thinks, oh, you know, he, he's just explosions, loud noises. Like, no, the joke when he was doing the Ocarina was um, he gets the new one from Zelda and just throws, <laughs> throws hers against the wall and shatters it. It's like, yeah! yeah. <laughs> Friendship ended. <laughs> Now Zelda's Ocarina is my new best friend. <laughs> I can go through time with this. <laughs> this makes me a man. <laughs> this age to be seven years. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, no, it's been it's 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 fun to ha kind of. I, I sort of did this with the Metal Gear Solid series too. Is like I I played them in the wrong order, right? Started with the latter ones and then kind of went to the to the earlier ones. But it's fun to kind of see it that way. Like, oh, okay. So this is sort of the game that establishes the tone to expect the what wh for what to expect of the rest of the series, and now it's like okay, now this kind of makes more sense if this is where it came from. But uh, I don't think I would have been able to make it through it myself. <laughs> I mean, they they weren't easy games if you were no. a child. Definitely no, no. Not. I mean, I would spend, you know, week. I would just sequester myself away and go through magazines, I'd be talking to the kids in the playground, have you, have you played this level? Mm. And we'd all group think how to get through this, the, the, the dungeon or whatever. And um, yeah, it took a long time. And yeah. the, but the difference is it wasn't, it, it wasn't sort of a time wasting exercise, like, like games are now. Games yeah. are now. It's grind. Yeah, now. games yeah. are just grinding and sort of addicting gambling mechanisms to get yep. to It was more like, this is a really difficult puzzle. And mm -hmm. you, you literally have to think your way out of the room. It's a bit more like D&D, &D, you know? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, a collaborative effort. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so it was so much fun going to, like I'd be playing all evening, and then next day at school, you know, recess would happen, and you'd be like, guys, we need to talk yeah. about this dungeon. And um, there would always be one smart kid be like, I got through it, this is how I did it. And we're like, you know, writing it down. It's like, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, you have to do this and do that. It was just, it was, it was great. That, to me, that's what video games used to be, mm -hmm. you know, super fun. 
yeah, a yeah. way to uh, engage with other people. Because there was no internet, you couldn't just look up how to do it. Yeah. I mean, whole magazines would be sold based off of, we'll help you get through it if I you buy this magazine. I remember those, and I remember sometimes they would have codes in them that didn't work. Yeah. It was just yeah. entirely yeah. rumor. Yeah. Oh my god, the rumor about the tri- you could get the Triforce in Ocarina of Time. What, really? <laughs> that was, that was from rumor. a magazine. Oh my yeah. god. And it just like, be it became the playground uh, rumor across the entire world. Oh my god. I could meet an American kid, I could meet a Japanese kid and be like, did you find the Triforce? Did you figure it out? <laughs> oh, of, course, <laughs> of course you couldn't. It's yeah, not in the not game. game. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. reminded of the, the Mew truck. Yeah, well that, here's the thing, it's like, so I, with some of these I'm not sure what is what is still fake and what is uh, yeah. what is real, because I've heard people go, no, 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 you can do it, but it's only a certain version, but isn't that the greatest plausible deniability? I know, yeah, things? yeah. I mean, we did get um, Luigi's Real yes. got proved a couple of years ago. Wait, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I feel like I saw something about the Mew truck being like, uh, no, it's legit, but it's not exactly how you thought it was. It's, uh. it's this other thing. Because um, the only Mew I knew was real was a tournament sanctioned Mew that I won in a 1999, you know, oh. Pokemon tournament. Oh my god. Oh man. You never know, the Triforce might still be in Might the still be in it there. It might be in the code. Yeah. It might, it might be in the code. Somebody glitched in their the way game. into one specific wall, they got the Triforce and was like, yo! <laughs> it's like the company says, no, it doesn't exist, and some coders like, like hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for the 30 year mark. <laughs> well, we'll probably be waiting a lot longer than that <laughs> from the way the games are going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or maybe people will be like so hungry for the old games, they'll just go back and you know, keep oh, playing them. Crossed. Yeah, I mean, Alnum is still alive. He could come back. <laughs> <laughs> right up. Keep playing jazz, buddy. You have yeah. your day. <laughs> Well, guys, thanks so much for listening and for watching. Thank you guys again for joining for yeah. another Zelda episode because I'm still, I'm still, I'm still thinking I'm gonna play Wind Waker next. So, guys, thanks again, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.